So if you've been keeping up with the news, or if you've personally experienced one of the tragedies that has struck our world lately, whether it be the fires or the hurricanes or the earthquake or whatever else it might be, you might be finding yourself in a place of discouragement. And worse than that, you might be asking the question, is God really there? And does He really care? A few nights ago, I found myself praying about the tragedies that have been occurring in our world and about the people that have been impacted and affected by them. And I began to, to feel this discouragement while I was praying to God and I was going for a walk outside and I remember looking up into the night sky and seeing the moon and it was just this full, brilliant, bright moon in the sky. And I was reminded of that verse in Genesis where it talks about God giving the moon as the governing light for the night and the sun to govern the day. And I remember looking up and thinking about the fact that the moon, on regular occasions, you can see the moon at night. And every day, if you look up in the sky, the sun is going to be there. And I remember thinking, God made the moon and the sun, and yet He governs both. He governs His entire creation. He's the governor of all. But the thought struck me, sometimes, even if the moon is out at night, or even if the sun's out at day, sometimes when you look up, you're not going to see them. Because there might be cloud cover. It might be a, a stormy day. It might be a foggy day. Something might be blocking your line of sight to the moon or to the sun. And I think the same thing happens with God. Just because you're in the middle of a crisis and you can't necessarily see God does not mean He's not there. Jehoshaphat in the Bible was this Israelite king who at one point in time had all these armies coming up against him. And it was this impossible situation. It was a crisis that he was facing because there was no way that they could possibly win. And yet what he did was because he was seeking after God, because he had made God his priority in the moment of crisis, the prayer that he prayed to God was, God, we have set our eyes upon you. That's amazing to me. And I truly believe that's the same thing that God desires when we're in a moment of crisis. When the world looks like it is in a state of crisis, God desires us to set our eyes on Him. And then I think about Peter in the boat and Jesus walking on the water and Peter calling out to Jesus and saying, Lord, let me come out to you on the water. And once he steps out and once he's walking towards Jesus, he begins to take his eyes off of his Lord and he begins to look at these huge waves and suddenly he begins to sink. And I'm just reminded of the fact that if we would keep our eyes on God, even in the middle of the storm, nothing would be able to sink us. And I know there's some people out there who have said these, these tragedies and these events that have happened are the wrath of God. I want to tell you what I do know about God's wrath. It's that man sinned and yes, we have fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. But 2,000 years ago, God poured out the entirety of His wrath on mankind and Jesus, His perfect Son, stepped in the way and He bore all of it on the cross. So now we have the opportunity to come to God and say, God, I get to stand before you because I am trusting fully and completely on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. And now I know that when you see me, you don't see my sin. You don't see my mistakes, but you see the perfect righteousness of your son. Even if you feel discouraged right now, know that God is there, that he does care. And that even in the middle of crisis, He's saying, look at me and come to me. Set your eyes on me. Draw near to me. Respond to my grace and to my love. When we're listening to the voice of God and we're responding to Him, we're way better equipped to respond to crisis. James 4.8 says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you.